Hi, my name is Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, I'm going to take a rather roundabout way of showing you another iteration statement, the while statement. And to demonstrate this, we're going to open up a text file from our computer's hard drive, read each line of that text file, and then print the results of that into our console window. Uh, of course, until we get to the end of the file. So beyond the specifics of using the while iteration statement and reading data from a text file, there's other uh, several other key ideas that I want to cover, like how to add other files to our project, how to work with null values, how to change the properties of things in the properties window, and several other key ideas. So let's just get started by creating a new project uh, in one of the ways that we're familiar with. I'm going to go new project from our toolbar. Opens up the new project dialog just like any other method we've used. And here I'm going to call this project read text file while. And click OK. And the very first thing that I want to do is right click on the project here in the Solution Explorer and select add new item. And from the Add New Item dialog, I want to scroll down to Text File here near the bottom. I'm going to change this name to values.txt and click Add. All right, so that's how you add a new file in your project. In this case, just a text file. We could add other code files and so on, and we'll do that as our examples get a little more complicated. All right, so what I want to do at this point is start typing in some values. I'm going to use the same sequence of numbers I used earlier. You might recognize these. And then I'm going to select the Save All button on my toolbar. All right, so I'm going to close that file by clicking the little X next to the tab. And I'll be back in my program.cs file. And I want to write some code in my static void main. And I'm going to do several things here. Let me go ahead and type the code passage out, and then I'll explain what I do line by line. Okay, so I did a lot of typing. However, the application at this point will not run. If we attempt to run the application and we take a look at the errors, the type or namespace stream reader could not be found. Are you missing a directive or an assembly reference? The problem is that C Sharp can't resolve the word stream reader. In other words, it has no idea what we're referring to here. The problem is that stream reader doesn't live in any of the default namespaces for our project. In fact, it lives in a different namespace that we haven't referenced up to this point. Now, I'll explain what namespaces are in a future lesson, but just for now, know that we're going to need to fix this before we can continue. And without going too deep into what namespaces are, let me uh, just take a moment, first of all, to explain what each line of code is attempting to do, then we'll come back and fix this, and then we'll continue on. So right here what we're doing is creating a new instance of this stream reader. And the stream reader, think of it like a straw. And this object has one purpose in life, and that is to, to basically suck up every line of uh, that's in our values.tx file. You remember the one that we added all of our 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. All right, so it's going to one by one stream in that content so that we can consume it. So Next, we create an empty line. And what we want to do is each time there's another value from the file, we're going to temporarily put it into this line variable. All right. So 
here's where we define our while statement. So while this condition is true, continue to execute this code. So the while statement is a lot like the for or the for each. The connotation just a little bit different, it's just a little bit nuanced. So while something is true, continue to uh, process this code block. So it'll continue looping until something hits false and then it will fall out. Uh, so while line is not equal to null, in other words, keep reading from the stream reader every line in our values.txt file until we reach a line that is null. And null just means indeterminate. Um, uh, null is a difficult concept for beginners to remember, I've found. Uh, a null value means that it's unknown or indeterminate. It's not an empty string. Uh, an empty string is known. We know that the string has no values. It's basically the equivalent of two uh, double quotes next to each other. This, we're not sure what the value is. So um, these are not the same idea, uh, a null value versus an empty string. Just keep that in mind. Um, when we reach a line that's indeterminate or null, then we wanna break out of our loop. We're gonna attempt to read the very next line from our file by calling my reader, the stream reader, Dot read. That's the equivalent of <laughs> sucking up with our straw, okay? And uh, if that line is not null, then print it to the console window. If it is null, we're going to catch it here on the next pass, break out of our while loop, and continue on closing my reader, which means we're going to go ahead and dispense with the straw, put it away, close the file. We, we're not going to deal with that. We want to release our lock on that resource on our hard drive. So we need to close it uh, and, and get rid of the straw, so to speak. And then finally, our obligatory read line. So let's, let's fix the problem with stream reader here. And there's a couple of different ways that we can go about it. When I put my uh, uh, cursor, my mouse cursor inside of the stream reader, a little icon appears here. And as I hover over, a little down arrow appears over it. And I'm gonna click the down arrow and this gives me a couple of different options. I'm gonna choose this first option, which is a using system.io uh, statement. And when I click this, I want you to watch what happens on line five. On line five, using system.io has been added. Furthermore, after a moment, the blue squiggly line should go away. We may need to give it a second to refresh, but I should be able to run the application now. Okay, there it went away. Good news and bad news, partially successful. First of all, app, our application began to run. However, we got a different exception this time. File not found exception was unhandled. Could not find the file. See users, Robert Tabor documents, Visual Studio 2010 projects, read text file while, read text file while, bin debug values.txt. And the reason this happens is because our values.txt file was not copied to the proper folder in our hard drive. So let's navigate into where all of our projects are stored. We're looking at this read text file while folder. If I were to drill in here and go to the bin directory and the debug directory, you'll see we don't have that values.txt file. So what happens when you build your application, it's gonna copy a bunch of files over like the uh, compiled version of your application plus some of these other helper files for Visual Studio and debugging mode and all of that that we talked about uh, in an earlier video. What we need to do is select our values.txt file in the solution explorer and then we'll see properties of that file down here in the properties window. Now specifically what I want to look for is this copy to output directory. It's by default set to do not copy. Now that's not going to do us any good. We need that file copied. We're relying on that file. So I'm going to drop down that list box and select copy if newer. You don't have to always copy the file over every time we recompile the application. Only copy it if something has changed in the file. Um, and there's just a, a small nuance difference between copy always and copy if newer. Let's just go ahead and select copy if newer and then rerun our application. And you can see we've now printed out the values from our text file under the console window. Great. 
Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this lesson. I know there's some mystery surrounding this using statement. Trust me, we'll get to that a little bit later. At least for the moment, you know how to resolve these types of uh, namespace issues that might pop up in future code examples. Uh, the why it happens, we'll explain that in a bit. Okay, so let's recap some of the things that we talked about in this lesson. Uh, for now, hopefully you've got another iteration statement under your belt. Use that while iteration statement whenever there's an indeterminate number of times that you need to, to iterate through a block of code. Um, it's different from the for iteration statement because the for iteration statement, we knew exactly how many times up front that we wanted to iterate through the block of code. This will kind of depend on something inside of the body of code to change how many times we we loop through that given code block, okay? So that's the difference essentially between the two. You can see that there's a need for both of those situations and therefore that's why it exists. We also learned about the stream reader class. I compared it to a straw that allows us to suck in a a line of data from a text file using the read line method. And then we use the close method to release our, our lock on that resource, on that text file on our, our hard drive. And while we were talking about the stream reader class, we saw how we needed, uh, how we need to help the C-sharp comp compiler sometimes resolve references to the classes that we, we use by providing a using statement for the class's namespace. And I haven't told you the full story about all that just yet, but, and, and frankly, we're not gonna be able to put it off much longer, but just hang in there with me on that idea. Uh, we talked briefly about null values, how it's an indeterminate value, it's different from an empty string, okay? And then we talked about how to, we added a text file to our project, how to set properties uh, using the property window, specifically how we set the, uh, the copy uh, operation for that file to our debug or bin direct uh, our um, release directory. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.